Eventually, it gets pretty wonky. Hello and welcome back to the Science Factory. My name is Mr. Brian and we're going to be giving you five more plastic cup challenges today, but this time they're gonna be team challenges. And if you want a bit of a crazy challenge, you can combine all five of these games into one long relay race. If you haven't already checked out our other Plastic Cup Challenges video, we did five head-to-head -head challenges in a past video here. The team challenges in this video are a great option for giving your kids a break in the classroom or for entertaining your kids on a rainy day at home. Plus, these games are really helpful for building communication skills and teamwork skills for siblings and classmates. But it's also fun to keep track of your personal high scores and try to beat them and practice to get better at each game. For the ping pong toss challenge, you're going to need a ping pong ball and a cup for each player. For this game, you're going to put the ball into the cup and then try to pass it to your teammate from further and further distances. You're going to start five feet away from your partner with a ball in your cup, and then you're gonna pass the ball to your partner. If your partner catches the ball, throws it back to you, and you catch the ball, you can move back one line. I like to use tape or chalk to mark out lines on the ground so that all of the teams are moving back the same amount. The goal of this game is to throw the ball until you drop it and see how far apart you can get. The last team that's still throwing the ball wins. In another version, you can start a set distance apart and just see how many successful throws you can get within a minute's time. 10 feet is a good distance for this. For tilting towers, one partner is going to need six ping pong balls and the other one's going to need six cups. The goal of this game is for one partner to bounce the ball and the other partner to catch it in the cup. If successful, that partner is going to remove one cup from the bottom and stack it on top. Eventually, it gets pretty wonky. The first team to get all six balls in all six cups wins the game. A fun variation of this game, if you don't have someone to play with, is that you bounce the ball into your own cup. So you can play this game by yourself or with a partner. You can also just play for a high score by keeping track of how long it takes you to get six cups. It's time to use your head. For this ridiculous looking game, one partner is going to need a ping pong ball and the other partner is going to need this strange apparatus, a cup and a headband. The goal in this game is for one partner to bounce the ball off of the floor and the other partner to catch it in their headband. The person with the headband is strictly not allowed to use their hands unless they're retrieving the ball out of the cup or off of the floor. The goal in this game is to get the ball into the cup as many times as you can in one minute. You can also set a longer time frame if your students are having trouble. Our next game is head to head. And in this game, you and your partner are going to try to move a cup from one stool to another using only your foreheads. After you successfully transfer the cup from one stool to the other, you're going to stand up and do a high 10, and then continue and try to transfer the cup as many times as possible. If you drop the cup, don't worry. You can just pick it up, put it back on the stool, and keep going. If your team gets the most transfers within one minute, you win. To play island hopping, each player is going to need a cup, and each team is going to need a ping pong ball. To set up for this game, you're first going to need to set up a trail of markers that are each 10 feet apart. You can use tape, chalk, or some sort of objects like a folder to mark each spot. These are going to be the islands, and players are going to stand on two consecutive islands and try to pass the ping pong ball from one island to the other. If a team is successful at passing the ball from one cup to the other, then the thrower can leapfrog to the next island and become the catcher. The first team to get to the finish line wins. If you're playing with younger students who are having trouble, you can just move the islands closer together. And for really little ones, you can move the islands close enough to where they can pour the ball from one cup to the next. When you play this game, you can either set up one course and have teams take turns and then keep track of their high scores to complete the course, or you can set up two parallel courses, which can be really exciting because you can have two teams race in real time. The racing version is much more entertaining for all of the students who aren't playing at the time. While I hope you had fun with these new plastic cup challenges, if you decide to share them with family and friends, please make sure to reference our channel. A lot of these games are completely original to the Science Factory, although we did also borrow a couple of classic games for this video. 
We'd love to know what your favorite challenge was or what you think the most difficult one was. Please let us know in the comments section down below. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe, and click all notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. Well, I'm Mr. Brian, and I'll see you next time. My friend used to have this strange problem where whenever he drank a cup of tea, his eye would start hurting. So he decided to go to the doctor and have it checked out, and the doctor gave him a cup of tea so that he could see what would happen, and sure enough, he finished the tea and his eye started hurting. So the doctor turned to him and he said, well, maybe you should remove the spoon first.